Now on to the story of the C-27J Spartan, an aircraft purchased by the Air Force in 2007. 16 of them have been built and five more will be built by April 2014. But they won't be flying missions in our war theaters around the world. Instead, they'll reside in a desert in Tucson. Thanks to the sequester, the military has no use for these planes anymore, and almost every single one of them is slated to be stored at a boneyard at the davis monthan Air Force Base in Tucson. Even the five new C-27J planes scheduled to be built by next year, they'll go right to the desert straight off the assembly line, too. Now, there's a chance some of these planes may find other uses, like putting out forest fires and stuff, but for now, they'll just sit in the desert next to 4,400 other unused aircraft from all branches of our military, totaling more than $35 billion. So it's the latest example of waste in our defense budget. And joining me now to talk more about it is Michael Shank, Director of Foreign Policy at FCNL. Michael, thanks so much for joining me. It's good to be here. Uh, the ironic thing is this is happening just as there's this dialogue about too much uh, spending and too much waste in our government. Um, we know that the federal workers, uh, Pentagon workers who are furloughed are now back on the job. Mm -hmm. And now we have this story. Why is the Pentagon immune from all these talks about uh, too much spending and waste in our government? For some reason, we continue to allow the Pentagon and the Department of Homeland Security to two agencies that haven't been audited. The GAO did a great report on this. They have not been audited. The Pentagon says it won't be audited until 2017, 2018. They claim to care about, you know, waste, fraud, abuse. Tendency is not. Great example, on this show I talked about the MRAPs in Afghanistan being destroyed because we didn't want to bring them home, we didn't want to give them to the Karzai government. The cargo planes in Arizona joining $34 billion worth of equipment that's not being used. That's almost akin to what the House Republicans cut in food stamps. Shows how disingenuous their, their argument is about kind of small government cleaning up waste, fraud, and abuse. Um, unfortunately, that's ubiquitous through, throughout. Industry, I would say, is largely responsible. The defense industry lobbying generally since 2000 on 2000, 2008, uh, it was up as high as 160 million per year lobbying members of Congress. Now it's about 130, half of which five companies, the top companies, spending lobbying Congress. Well, alongside lobbying, another reason might have something to do with the fact that it's become a jobs program. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure to build these uh, these planes came from Congress, came from members uh, who are in Ohio That's and right. know that building these planes and maintaining them equals jobs for their, for their district. So uh, is the military industrial complex perpetuated because it's become such a jobs program in the United States? Right. So if we look at percent of GDP, Pentagon claims to sit, you know, four to five percent of the GDP has to do with defense spending. It's actually more like 10 percent if you count in uh, Department of Veteran Affairs, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Energy, things like that. But the problem with the jobs argument, it's not a great return on investment. If we're looking at a dollar spent on defense versus a dollar spent on education, infrastructure, energy, much higher returns there. So the, the jobs argument is disingenuous, but Senator Brown, to your point, got lobbied heavily by Lockheed and L3 Communications to make sure that that cargo plane, which we don't need, along with the Global Hawk drone and the Abrams tank, is built, even though the Pentagon is saying, we don't want it. Yeah, it's kind of like if you put people to work building a bridge, that bridge stays there and generates value. If you put people to work right. building bombs and, and planes, they explode and that's, that's, that's exactly that. Right. Um, now, I mentioned in the in the toss intro here that some of these planes might be used by other agencies, maybe fighting forest fires, uh, things like that. But we've recently heard these stories about the increasing use of military technology, uh, military uh, vehicles by police departments. Um, is that concerning in itself? Oh, it's terribly concerning. So DHS gives these terrorism grants to municipalities, 34 billion since 2001. So they're buying the drones. More egregious example is this 1033 program in the Defense Department where essentially older equipment, which we don't want anymore, we pass on to cities. So a small town in upstate New York, as an example, last week the county legislators voted eight to six to accept an MRAP, which is a mine resistant, uh, ambush protected vehicle, which we use in Afghanistan, but we don't really need it in Watertown, a town of 120,000. So you're going to see a militarization of cities because we're dumping old equipment. The industry is happy with that. Their 130 million is well spent lobbying Congress. They're going to get new equipment. Michael Schenk, Director of Foreign Policy at FCNL. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for having me.